Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another tutorial. This is going to be part two on stacks. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to implement a stack with an array list. In the last tutorial, we talked about uh, the concept of the stack interface. And in this one, we're going to be implementing the interface to help us out with the array list. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing you want to do is uh, go here, create a new Kotlin file or class. And I'm going to name this something appropriate like uh, array list stack. And this class is going to be implementing this interface. So I'm going to call this class array list stack. And of course, it's going to have the same generic as we had before, which is E. And it's going to have E in here. And this is also going to implement stack like so. And as you can see, it gives us an error here because we haven't implemented any of the methods. So we're going to click here, implement members, or if you're in IntelliJ as well, you can do, um, you know, alt shift or alt insert and then implement methods. And then I'm going to select all of these and hit OK. And as you can see, it's going to give us a bunch of to do's in here. But these are the five methods that we need to implement from the stack interface. So to implement this, we need to realize that uh, we're going to have a representation of our stack. And in this case, we're using an array list implementation. So we're going to have a private var and let's call this stack. And this stack is going to be a type of array list. And it's going to be a type of E. And we're going to initialize this to a new array list like so. So that should work out. And now the other rest of the methods should be easy to implement. Um, if we want to push, for example, all we got to do, I'm going to delete this to do here. And I'm going to put, you know, whenever we push a new element, all we have to do is say stack dot add and then element. So whenever we call the push method, it's just going to add a new element to our array list. And for pop, Remember what pop does pop retrieves the top element after it removes it. So it returns the removed element that we just, um, you know, popped out of the stack. But before we do that, I want to actually use top first to help us with the pop method. And to do that, all we have to do is uh, in the top method, we will return stack at stack dot last index. And what this does, it will return the top element of our array list. So if our you know, array list has five elements, it will return the fifth element in that array list. And that's all it does. So it's pretty simple. And for our pop method, we will need to use that top method to our advantage here. So we're going to say var popped element. And we're going to make it equal to top. Then we will remove that element from our uh, array list or our stack. In this case, so we're going to say stack dot remove and popped element. And then we're going to return popped element itself. And it's going to give us a warning here. We can change this to val. Actually, it's correct uh, because we're not changing the value of popped element. So that's good. Is empty is going to be pretty simple. All we have to do is uh, return if the stack is empty. So return stack dot is empty. That's pretty much it. And for the size, it's the same thing. It's really simple. So again, it's a one liner solution. Uh, all we have to do is um, return stack dot size. And there you go. That's pretty much uh, it's really that simple for the realist implementation. And now it's time to actually test it out. Now, I've made a main method in here. All you have to do is make a class and call, um, you know, make this method called fun main. So in our main method, we're going to be making a stack of strings as an example. So I'm going to say string stack or sorry, var string stack. And this is going to be a type of stack. And it's going to be a stack of strings. So I'm going to uh, put that as the parameter. And then that's going to be equal to array list stack. And because remember, array list stack is a type of stack itself. So this is going to compile uh, properly. So now that we have our uh, stack of strings, 
what we need to do is test some operations. So I'm gonna say, you know, just for sanity check, string stack dot top, string stack dot pop. And remember, we have no elements in here. So let's see what happens when I run this. When I hit run, it will actually give me, or it should actually give me an error here. And it does give me an error. Uh, and it says index out of bound exceptions. And this is because obviously when we implemented this method, we just kind of assumed that the stack was not empty. Uh, but obviously in computer science in general, assuming things is a bad practice. So we must check if the stack is empty. And if that's the case, we don't throw index out of bound, but instead we want to throw empty stack exception. So to do that, we come back here and we check if stack dot size is equal to zero or we can use is empty as well it doesn't really matter so we can use you know is empty if that's the case then we will throw empty stack exception just like that otherwise it will um, you know just fetch the top element from the stack so now when we come back to our main method and run it again You'll notice that it won't give us index out of bound, but it will give us an empty stack exception. And that's the one we want to actually throw. So we're taking care of uh, error handling in a better way. Okay, so now that we got the error handling, um, we can actually now try to make it a working scenario. So we're going to say string stack dot uh, push. So we're going to use the push method. And we're going to add string one. And let's add a bunch of more strings. So I'm going to... And by the way, if you don't know how I did that, um, if you're on IntelliJ, you can duplicate a line by doing control D like so. So I'm going to make the string two, string three, four, five, six. So we're pushing a bunch of elements in our stack. And now we're going to test out some stuff. So we're going to say S out uh, top is going to be, well, it's going to be uh, string stack dot top. So that's going to be our top element. And then that should actually print six or string six. So that's our top element. Um, what about pop? So we're going to duplicate this line. So we're going to say pop. And like so. And this should also return string six because this one just peeks at it and this one actually removes it and it's going to return string six. Let's do pop again. This time it should return string five. And if we do top again, it should return five again. This should actually work. I'm gonna change this to uh, top. So this is just uh, basic testing. And if we do, um, you know, push again, for example. So if I do string stack dot push test, and I do S out, I'm going to do, um, actually, I'm going to copy this. So in this case, it's going to be test and so on and so forth. So let's test it out. And just like that, it will tell us that, let me expand this. Okay, so string six was the first top. Then we popped it. It was still string six that we popped. Then we popped again, and that returned us string five. Then we topped again. That actually returned string four. So I was <laughs> this is actually wrong. Uh, so string four was our top element because we popped twice here, right? So that makes sense. And then we added a new element called test. And when we did a top, it printed the test. So as you can see, there's more unit tests we can make for the stack, but for now it's just a basic implementation and these are just basic tests for it. But that's pretty much it for the ArrayList um, implementation. It's actually pretty simple and ArrayLists are dynamic, meaning that they're not fixed in size. So we don't have to worry about a fixed size capacity. So that's uh, another advantage. And, uh, you know, popping an element from the ArrayList should be O of one, that's, uh, you know, constant time it shouldn't take much time either top is the same thing it just returns the element at the last index right uh, is empty just checks if it's empty and then push just as an element 
So all these operations are actually pretty efficient and in terms of size we're also pretty efficient because it's you know dynamic. So that's pretty much it for the uh, arrayless implementation. In the next episode we're going to do a linkless implementation and we're going to talk about the differences between the two as well. Uh, with that being said I hope this tutorial helped you out and if that's the case please give it a thumbs up. It helps me out as well and subscribe to the channel if you like the content and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.